Hi, I'm Lula King, the owner of Be Kind Botanicals, and I'm also a registered aromatherapist. Every week, I bring you a really great question asked by my clients, and it's all for what we call Q&A Wednesday. You ask a question, I answer. And as someone who has had several hundred hours of clinical training, it's really important to make sure that I'm giving you balanced information. And so that's really the purpose of these Q&A Wednesdays is to answer those questions that might seem silly to some, but honestly, when we look back at all the different things we've learned in our journey, it may not be so silly. So without further ado, this week's question is actually from Kelly, who sent it to me in Messenger on Facebook. And her question is, what material should my measuring spoons be made of? For example, if you want to mix one drop of essential oil into a teaspoon of lotion or aloe gel, can I can it be done in your hand or do you use a container? Or if you use a container, what do you use and what do you stir it with? Also, one of the kits on your site includes tin containers. What dilution is safe in a tin? I thought we had to use PET or glass containers. So, that being said, these are really, really great questions. And so this video is gonna be a little bit longer than what it normally is because this is really, really important, especially when it gets close to the holidays and all of us wanna make handmade gifts, you know, something that really expresses how much we care about our family members and friends. And so I want to address all of these questions. The first thing, measuring spoons. Um, I don't really, like using measuring spoons for the simple fact that over time we can bend the metal ones we can also notice wear and tear on the plastic ones so i tend to do all of my measuring by weight i know not everyone can do that if you are going to be measuring something see if you can find glass i know that's extremely difficult of an ask, um, but if you say look at it from a little beaker, a little 10 mil beaker, and I wish I would have brought one in here for you to see, but a little 10 mil beaker is perfect for that, or a 15 mil, even an 80 mil that you can get off Amazon, and they're relatively cheap, maybe a dollar to each, and you can use those and fill up to the milliliter line what you need in your carrier oil, and then add your one to 2%, 3%, whatever it is, depending on your need, into that beaker. So um, that's the first thing. Not a big fan of teaspoons or measuring spoons. The second one is, um, yes, you can mix things in your hand, but I really don't do that unless it's a first aid emergency type situation. Like I burned myself and I really just don't want to throw lotion or um, lavender rather straight onto it. Let's say I want aloe, whatever it may be. I, I tend to try to avoid measuring anything in my hand. Like I mentioned before, glass really is the best container to be measuring or utilizing when we're making our DIYs. And here's why. PET containers are fantastic, but PET, even from manufacturers when you're buying direct from manufacturers will tell you that there is a certain dilution that you should not go above and that it can only be in those containers for a certain amount of time this is really 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 important so when you're buying from a company um, especially if you're buying um, you know essential oils and bottles all from the same company you really need to know what that PET is rated for um, and a lot of a lot of PET is rated for anywhere from two to three percent on the high end, and slated for no more than eighteen months, sometimes six months, depending on the thickness of the PET and whatnot. So it's important to know that information. So PET is okay to store it in as long as you know you're going to use it within that amount of time. It's really really important, like I said, that you find out from where you're getting that materials from how much you can put in it as far as your dilutions and how long it will last in it before leaching starts because leaching will happen. Um, metal tins. I typically keep those about one to one and a half percent dilution rate and those are typically reserved for my salves. Things, so let's say like my gardening salve that I make for my hands. 
I do a lot of gardening year round because we have such great weather here. And I, I tend to find that 1% gets it. And so I can, I can store in a one ounce tin for about 18 months, but I typically go through my tins so quickly they're gone within three to six months. So, and that's again at a one to one and a half percent dilution rate. Um, metal tins long-term really are not a good way to store essential oils, especially if you're going above that dermal dilution. Um, another thing to consider is glass containers. I actually, prefer glass. It makes shipping a lot more expensive in some cases, unfortunately. Um, and so a lot of companies just don't like to use glass. But if you're doing a lot of DIY for gifts and just for yourself, or even as a practitioner, glass really is the way to go. It is not going to leach. It's not going to break down. And if you're using, um, let's say a company like SKS or Specialty Bottle, they tend to have pretty much everything you need. And there's a couple others that are fairly small that you can get glass containers from. And glass containers can be, you know, the little glass jars that you make body butters in. They can be glass bottles. It really depends on what you are looking to make. So I hope that's answered your question. And if you have more, please feel free to ask them because there really is no such thing as a silly question. And Here's my case on point for this particular one. How many of us have seen the videos or the pictures showing essential oils breaking down styrofoam cups or even the little plastic solo cups? I've seen a million of them, especially when I first started working with essential oils. And so this kind of thing, when we're first starting now, it, it doesn't seem silly. Even as practitioners, because we know where we have come from it's always important to remember what we may know may not necessarily be the same as what everyone else knows. So it's important for me to help you in your journey. And if you, again, have any more questions, feel free to ask. That's it for today's Q&A Wednesday. I hope you've enjoyed the question and learned a little bit. And I will touch base with you guys again next Wednesday. Have a great day.